In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you reference an external CSS style sheet in your HTML document. So we'll start by going to the tutorials folder that you downloaded from GitHub last time, um, and we're going to open the tutorial 2 folder in our, in our text editor, in this case Sublime Text 2. You'll see here in the index.html file, it's very similar to last time, however now we've wrapped our hello world text in an h1 tag, and we've also added two paragraphs below wrapped in p open and p close tags. Um, you'll also see in tutorial 2 there's a CSS folder and inside is a style.css style sheet. Um, this one uses the body selector to grab everything that's between the two body tags, so effectively all content, and it initializes it with um, three attributes and their values. The first is to render all text in the color red, the second is to render all text with font um, of size 16 uh, pixels um, with a 22 pixel line height and it's going to search first on the user's machine to see if they've installed Times. If they don't have that font it'll next check for Times New Roman and finally if they don't have that it'll default to whatever serif default font the uh, user has set for their browser. Finally it'll align all text to the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our FTP client FileZilla, go into our sites manager where we set our set up our preset and we're going to connect to the web as site preset using SFTP. Once we get into our uh, group folder we're going to go into the writable folder and again I'm going to hack Carolina's uh, um, subdirectory to show how this will work. So we'll go into Carolina and now we want to take the tutorial 2 files and bring them up to the server. Once these are fully uploaded we can go to Chrome and we'll open a new window and type in the website group1.webassite.com slash carolina slash tutorial2. And now you can see we've got hello world. This time it's rendered in a larger, tech, a larger typeface and bold, um, whereas before it was uh, small. And this is because we used the h1 tag to uh, wrap it. However, what you'll also notice is that we don't yet have red text, as you would assume, from the CSS file. So what we need to do is we need to tie the CSS file to our HTML document. You do that by putting a link tag in the head of the document. So here we'll do link, then we have to do uh, attribute of rel equals style sheet to tell it what type, what type of link it is. Then you'll tell it type is text slash CSS. And then finally you'll give it the href um, or hyper-reference of where the CSS file is and relative to where the index.html file is stored on the server it's in the CSS folder in the file is style.css and the link has no closed tag it's very much like the image tag it only has a series of um, attributes so now we'll save this and use our FTP program going into tutorial 2 to re-upload, or rather overwrite, the index.html file. Say OK. And now if we refresh this page, we'll see that all of the text is red. And so now we know that it's, uh, that it's referencing the CSS file. So a real quick exercise. Um, we're now going to take all of the h1 tags, and we're going to give them a different color. In this case, we're going to do green. So I'll save this, and then we'll upload style.css. And if I refresh this, now we'll see that h1 is green. Um, this represents the key feature of CSS, which is cascading. So in this case, body, everything in body was given the color red, and h1 is within body, so it was first given the color red. However, as you read down the page, you'll see that uh, h1, below, because it was below body, overwrites body. So as it cascades down the page, it can get more precise. Um, we'll illustrate this back in uh, the Chrome browser by going to View, Developer, Developer Tools. And here under the Elements tag, 
uh, you can see the entire HTML document that we have open in Sublime Text. And if you select uh, body, as I've done here, you can see on the right all of the CSS styles. So here you see body has color of red, font is 16 over 22 times, and uh, text align is left. Now if we click on H1, you'll see that at the bottom it has body color equals red crossed out. And the reason it's crossed out is because, like I said, H2, uh, or sorry, the H1 uh, type was rendered after body, or uh, was inserted after body in the CSS uh, um, document. Um, and so that's why it's being rendered as green. So if we'll go back here, we'll do a couple more things. Now on this paragraph tag, we're going to give it a class of blue. And we'll give this paragraph tag a class of red. Save. And then if we go into style.css, the way that you represent a class selector is with a, by a, a preceding period. And then type in blue. And here we can do color blue. And you'll notice the syntax is attribute followed by a colon followed by the value. And you can put as many spaces between the colon and the value as you like. It's uh, entirely up to you. And then we'll do uh, for class red. Um, with this one, we're going to do color red. We're also going to do text transform uppercase. And if I save this, now we made changes to both files, so we'll update both of them on our server. Style CSS and index.html. And now if I refresh, you'll see that this paragraph has been rendered blue, and this paragraph has been rendered red and all uppercase. Um, you can keep playing around with the CSS selectors. Uh, one thing to try if you're going to do the exercise is to uh, look at different forms of cascading. So the order of selectors in the document, starting with body, then h1, blue, and red, and so on, um, is one method of cascading where the lowest will have precedent over the highest. Um, but another way of cascading is to use precision. Um, so here we're going to do h1 pound header, and we're going to give that a color of black. And here we're going to add an ID equals header to the h1 tag. Now, whereas a point or period rather, a preceding period signifies a class in CSS, a pound sign signifies a uh, ID. So what this is looking for is an h1 tag with the ID of header, which is very precise. Um, so we'll save this, and we'll save index.html, and upload both again to the server. And if we go back here, we should see that now it's rendered in black. And if you remember the first rule, it was everything on the bottom overwrites everything, anything above it. However, in this case, even though the H1 is here attempting to render it as green, this H1 also has an ID, which makes it more precise. And therefore, this is another method of cascading where it'll actually overwrite whatever is below it.